For this next curve, we want to determine the inverse of this function algebraically, then graph the given function and its inverse, and state the domain and range of both the uh, original and of the inverse. Well, we begin by saying y is equal to the original function expression. Now, we then get into an interesting discussion. Uh, what we have here is one arm of a sideways opening parabola. And this means we're eventually going to have one arm of a parabola opening up or down. And this means that we will have a restricted domain. Since we're eventually going to be restricting the values of x, let's state the restricted values of y right now. Let's think about what that means. We know that eventually we're going to have a restricted value of x because we have only the negative bar of a downwards or upwards opening parabola. So since we're eventually going to have a statement that x is less than or equal to some quantity, why don't we make the statement y is less than or equal to some quantity right now before even switching x with y? The square root value is positive or zero always. This square root value is always positive or negative. Or sorry, is always positive or zero. Since we're multiplying it by a negative number, what we're going to have here is either negative 4 plus 0 or negative 4 minus some quantity. So, we can say that our y value is always going to be less than or equal to negative 4. We can then switch the x and the y values. We have two y's there and one x, and so we switch them, and we have two x's and one y. We then can add 4 to both sides and square both sides. After we square both sides, we can multiply both sides by 3 and subtract 1. And since we know x is less than or equal to negative 4, we can put that on the side with the x terms, and we can say y is equal to that quantity right there with an x less than or equal to negative 4. We switch y with that term, and what we have is f inverse of x equaling 3 bracket x plus 4 quantity squared minus 1. x is less than or equal to negative 4. Okay, now if we were to look at the original curve, what, um, what we would have to do is think of it in terms of transformations. So we would uh, factor out a one-third, we would have x plus 1. So we would have an a value of negative 1, a k value of a third, a d value of negative 1, and a c value of negative 4. And we would put our parent function of y equals the square root of x through those transformations, we would get this green curve. Or, a more ingenious way of doing it, and this is pretty clever, is before we graph the original function, let's graph the inverse. We know this is the inverse, and it's easier to graph. We can use our grade 10 methods on graphing the inverse. It's just an, open, it's just an upwards opening parabola with a vertex at negative 4, negative 1, only the left-hand side of it. And so now, we know that the if the um, inverse is a reflection in the line y equals x of the original, then the original is a reflection in the line y equals x of the inverse. So we literally just go back to the inverse. Or sorry, go back to the original, from the inverse to the original. So if the vertex here is negative 4, negative 1, the vertex of the original will be negative 1, negative 4. Since this opens up and to the left, ours will open uh, to the right and down. And there we go. Our domain of our uh, green curve is the set of all x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 1. And the range is the set of all y such that y is less than or equal to negative 4. And our domain and range of the uh, blue curve should correspond precisely with that. The domain of the inverse will be x less than or equal to negative 4, corresponding precisely with the range of the original. 
and the range of the blue curve will be y greater than or equal to negative 1 corresponding precisely with the domain of the original.